the number one thing you've got to do is take the restraints off of God. And, and I'm not just saying let God be God. I'm saying he works according to principle, according to certain laws and things like that. He's very predictable, very predictable. He's, he's even mechanical in some ways. Uh, I mean, I, I could give you, you want examples? You need, do you need examples? I can give you some examples. You want examples? Okay. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, mechanical nature of God's power. Uh, Moses. Moses standing at the Red Sea. Everybody says, what's going to happen? The Egyptian army's coming. Moses turns and begins to cry to God. And God says, why are you crying to me? <laughs> now think about that. You got probably a couple of million man army chasing you. You've got a whole bunch of ex-slaves that hadn't ever fought anybody. And this army is bearing, the most powerful army in the world is bearing down on them. And you're the leader. Guess what? If there was ever a time to cry unto God, that was it. Right? But God said, why are you crying unto me? <clears throat> he said, what's that in your hand? Moses said, this is the rod that you told me to go. And same one he threw down and became a serpent and all that. And he said, that's right. And then God said, you stretch forth your hand and part the sea. He didn't say, stretch forth your hand and I'll part it. Now we know it was God's power. But you have to remember this. If God told you to do something, listen carefully, this is a principle. If God tells you to do something, whether it's a command in the word or whether it's even a, some type of leading, but you know it's God. Anything that gets between you and the fulfillment of that, you don't have to talk to God about. You crush it. You speak to it. You speak to that mountain that's in your way and you tell it to remove itself and you speak. Why? Because you know it ain't from God. Because God's not going to tell you to do something that he doesn't want you to do and then while you're doing it try to put some type of obstacle in the way so if you hear from God and then an obstacle comes up it's of the devil if it's a door kick it in if it's a mountain you know drive it out I mean tell it to remove whatever you have to remember that whatever stands between you and God or you and the fulfillment of God's uh, command is not from God so you pay no attention to it other than getting rid of it amen not, God, why'd you do this? God, why is this happening? No. Mm -mm. That's what Moses did. And God said, shut up and stretch forth and part it. Amen? Do you get that? Yeah. Okay, you got that? So that was one. Now, there's another one. <clears throat> Remember whenever they were fighting and Moses, Aaron, and Hur, which is a man, by the way, in case you don't figure that out. Hur was a man. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, okay. <laughs> so... Well, what times we live in. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <clears throat> there, the Israelites are fighting down in the valley. And Moses goes over and raises up his hands. And his hands are up. Israel wins. Moses starts getting tired. His hands come down. Israel starts losing. Hands up. Israel wins. Hands down. Israel loses. Aaron and her look. And, hmm. Let's see if this will work. They take his hands and hold them up. They win mechanical do you see that that's mechanical I mean you would at least think that God would have said no nah, don't hold up his hands he's got to do it on his own seems almost unfair that somebody else would come hold up the arms doesn't it I mean you would think he would have to do it himself but no God said hey I don't care how the hands are up as long as they're up you're going to win do you see the mechanical power of God okay uh, they're bringing the ark back it's on a cart they start bringing it back in it hits a rough place uh, the ark starts to fall off of the cart the man reaches out and touches it to steady it. A good deed, wouldn't you think? But God had said, anybody touches that, they die. When he said it, it became a law. Yeah. He didn't have to say, oh, you did it, you're dead, kill him. He didn't have to do that. The law, as soon as God spoke it, it became a law. Whoever touched it died. God didn't have to give a decree of death. He had already said, he'd already put in motion, just like he said, light be and light is. And guess what? It, God does not wake up every morning and say, Son, S-U-N, let's do it again. Earth, let's go around, let's do it again. Uh, light be one more time. Let's keep going. No, he put everything in motion, said at one time it's still working. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. The mechanical power of God. Guess how you got here tonight at the right time? The mechanical power of God. Why? Because we set our watches and everything by the earth and the rotation with the sun and all that kind of stuff. So you, you already rely on the mechanical power of God. But see, people don't like this because it puts responsibility on them. 
whenever you find out that there are certain things that God has said to do and you don't have to wait for it. Smith Wigglesworth said, if it's in the Bible, it's so. It doesn't even have to be prayed about. It is simply to be believed and acted upon. He kind of knew what he was talking about. Amen? I mean, he, he had kind of the proof to back it up, right? So, 